Hello, hello. Come on in. Folks are going to be trickling in. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started in a few minutes. Hi, hi, Myra. Um, all right. Uh, how about this? For a warm up question, I would love folks to share um, what song has been getting you through uh, the new year? So I'll go ahead and put that in the chat. If folks didn't hear, is uh, for a warm up question, please. Getting you through the new year. All right, awesome. Great, great to see some familiar faces and names. Okay, and we'll go ahead and get started in just a few minutes. So go ahead and respond to the warm up question in the chat, um, which is you know, what is a, a song that's been getting you through? Um, the new year, which is, oh my gosh, four days in. Okay, here we go. Oh, nice, nice. I'm trying to think, um, I'm listening to like a lot of classical music lately, just to kind of <laughs> make me feel uh, a little bit uh, you know, calm these days. Awesome. All right, Pamela, hey, how's it going? Uh, yeah, we're just going to wait a few minutes for folks to kind of um, join in. Um, hey, Jessica, go ahead and make you a co-host. Awesome. Okay. Um, oh my gosh, what's the purple? Oh, I think I know that song. The something something One purple. Weird something. flying purple people eater. Oh yeah. Uh, thing now. <laughs> Is it making a comeback? <laughs> That's, That's cool. awesome. <laughs> Love it. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get started in just another minute. Uh, Saturday night fever. Awesome. Great. Um, Awesome. So my name is Kate. I'm from CSTA. Um, we're going to be joining uh, throughout this webinar. And the nice thing is it's going to be recorded and shared out later. So folks will view it later, but they'll just be uh, viewing um, kind of the presenter screen. So none of your faces or names will be shown. Um, but I'm really excited tonight to kind of talk about um, taking charge. Um, I don't know if any folks have like done their research on the benefit page or done some Googling, um, but it's just a really great platform. Um, so I'm Kate, you received a lot of emails and heard from me a lot, but um, I would like to think to introduce a few other folks that are on the web that are going to talk tonight. Um, Jessica, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I, um, I'm going to be doing most of the talking when we get to talking about taking charge properly. Um, I'm a a someone who's both enjoyed playing take in charge but also enjoyed teaching with it so i'll be kind of facilitating both giving you guys an overview of the game and then also um what is in there my teaching roots are mostly middle school was my sweet spot went up to 12 and a little bit further younger than that as well um but middle i'm one of those one of those weird middle school types Everybody else out there who knows them will probably and probably understand. We don't each we don't always understand other grade levels, but I'll be working with you guys on taking charge tonight. Yeah, so excited you're here. Um, and Neil, I see that you're also on this webinar. Neil, do you want to take a minute to introduce yourself real quick? Sure. My name's Neil Hardeck, and I'm actually the chairman of uh, of Galvanized Labs, the maker of Taking Charge. Uh, we have been uh, thrilled to work with a variety of schools around the country and work with Kate and. CSTA, uh, and we're just very excited to be, you know, be able to offer this to, you know, so many kids. It's something that's important to uh, myself, the Take in Charge team, and uh, we, uh, you know, hope you enjoy uh, what uh, Kate and Jessica have, have have to say. Awesome. Thanks so much, Neil. And you know who I am. So um, I think just two other things, a reminder is um, we're going to ask everyone to like mute themselves during the presentation. But um, uh, Jessica, let me know if you want something different. But usually folks can ask questions throughout the presentation in the chat and we'll hopefully address them in the demo. 
And then if not, usually afterwards, um, again, I will be recording this, but we're really excited you're here. And, uh, there's a lot going on in the world. So hopefully we can offer you a little bit of time just to kind of learn about something new that you can try for free and see if it's a good fit for your classroom or district. Um, yes, awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Jessica who has uh, presenting uh, abilities now, you know, we forgot those Zoom, Zoom logistics, but she's going to go ahead and share her screen and kind of talk about taking charge, but uh, so glad you're here and I'll let her kind of uh, move forward. Thanks everyone. Oh, can you unmute yourself, Jessica? Oh, maybe, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> I could do this all great. interpretive dance, but I don't have a big enough camera angle. So I did some hand motions, but we figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, guys. So take in charge are three, three of our key characters here on the front. Um, Neil, if you want to even talk just very briefly, just talk a little bit about ga uh, Galvanized Labs um, and just sort of the goals you guys started out with, and then I'll dive into the program itself. Sure. Uh, well, Galvanized Labs um, was formed prim primarily uh, by Mora, uh, with the and Mora had spent a number of years working uh, with children around the country, uh, teaching technology education. <clears throat> My own background is I uh, I worked in Silicon Valley for a number of years, so it's near and dear to my heart uh, that you know we have said for a long time how children need to get it you know get involved and how do we get reach as many kids as we can in a way that is fun for them, helps the teachers, but more importantly, by giving them a little bit of head fake, letting them play a game they don't think they're learning, but building great confidence when they see what they've actually learned. And I think Jess will talk about, you know, that, I mean, while this is a game, it's real education. And uh, what we've seen uh, when we've talked to a number of students around uh, it's done exactly what we wanted to do. They felt confidence and they continue to ask for additional CS learning. And that's basically, we're really giving them a foundation so for, and help them for success in the future. Awesome. Well put. So yeah, so we, you know, again, as we get through this, I have to tell you, even as someone who taught um, middle school technology is what it was labeled at the time for many years, um, I was unbelievably um, just intrigued at first and then blown away sort of the end of teaching with Taken Charge at how much the kids actually knew afterwards, which I think is sometimes rare and was an, an incredible benefit of using it in my classroom. So I'm gonna play this little video real quick, just as kind of a teaser trailer for Taking Charge. Um, I think it really does a good job of sort of laying the groundwork. It's about five minutes. If we have any audio issues, let me know. If, we, if this is crashing and burning, I'll go ahead and move on to the next slide because you guys are gonna get this deck with these videos embedded in it. So please sound off in the chat if it's not working for you or you're getting a weird echo, we'll abandon ship and move on to the next slide. STEM education. Wait, STEM? You know, science, technology, engineering, and math. Yeah, I've heard of that. Who hasn't heard of this or been a part of this important movement in the past several years? New STEM programs seem to pop up daily. And why is everyone rushing to focus on STEM education? I, I don't know, why? Simple. 60% of the new jobs that open in the 21st century will require skills possessed by only 20% of the current workforce. The U.S. may be short as many as 3 million high skill workers by 2018. Oh, yikes. And technology is at the forefront of the STEM education conversation. Wait, but why so much attention to the technology part? Because according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, by 2018, the bulk of STEM careers will be in computing. 71%. Wait, so you're saying that 71% of the need is going to be in technology and computing? That should definitely be our focus. Right. But unfortunately, even with all these STEM programs, the news still isn't good. Currently, nearly 28% of high school freshmen declare an interest in STEM-related fields, but 57% of these students will lose interest by the time they graduate from high school. So then, what's the solution? 
Simple. We have to sow the seeds of technology education at a younger age. We need to get kids interested and engaged in technology education before high school. Just like their other subjects in school, we need to start them with the basics and help them grow within technology as a subject as well. Let's do more than wait until they're in middle school and high school and dive right into coding. Right. Back to basics. If we start with the fundamentals, teach the kids technology. Wait a minute. How many kids are we talking about here? Well, there's about 35 million students in elementary school in the U.S. in 2014. Um, we're going to need a really big classroom, don't you think? Yeah, we're not going to be able to fit them all into a classroom, which is why we're going to teach kids online. No, 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 no more e-learning, please. No, no e-learnings. How about a video game? Go on. Meet Siri, Adele, and Sunny. Oh, and their dog, Charge. Oh, cute. Who are they? They're our new friends, but they need our help. Why? Because some mysterious bad guy has stolen their dog. Wait, what? Someone has taken charge? <laughs> exactly. That's not cool. We should call someone. Slow down. It's all good. We're going to help them. We're going to hop online, log in, and help them rescue charge. Wait, this is the video game you were talking about. Yep. Cool. What else do we need to do? We're going to find clues, explore crazy places, play tons of mini games, defeat all kinds of bosses, collect jewels, pick up tons of achievement and badges, all to rescue charge. That sounds like tons of fun. I want to play. But wait, weren't we supposed to be teaching kids technology, education, and fundamentals? We're doing that too. But where? When? By playing Take in Charge. What? Take in Charge is an online browser-based educational video game. But what about the other stuff you mentioned? The exploring, the mini games, the bosses. That sounds like tons of fun. It doesn't sound like learning to me. It's both. <laughs> okay, no offense. No one's parents will believe that that much fun playing a video game can mean that you were learning. Oh, but it can. In order to rescue Charge, and while doing all those other fun things, players will be learning the basics of technology education. Well, like what? Mm, how about internal computer hardware, operating system navigation, internet functionality, Boolean search logic, network functionality, home network setup, password internet safety, cyberbullying, and more. Whoa, wait, what? All of those are in the game too? Yep. And kids can earn 36 different digital badges that all align with the new technology skill sets they will acquire. So they can show the teachers, friends, whoever. Wow, you were right. Parents and kids are gonna love this. But the game looks so cool and like so much fun. Are you sure it's really an educational game? Well, if you're still unsure, just check out Taken Charge's ISTE Seal of Alignment. The what now? ISTE, the International Society for Technology and Education. ISTE is the creator and governing body of the definitive education technology standards. The Taken Charge curriculum is based on those ISTE standards. Taken Charge has received the ISTE Seal of Alignment, which validates the Taken Charge curriculum and teaching effectiveness against the most recognized technology education standards available. Wow. And Taken Charge is the first and only video game in the world to ever receive the ISTE seal of alignment. Think that's educational enough for you? Say it again. <laughs> wow. Well, where do I sign up? For more information about Taken Charge, just head on over to Taken Charge. All right, so you guys got the promo video there, which I think does kind of a good job, like both drumming up some excitement about the game, but then also building the use case. Let's hit you with some hard numbers here. Um, and I'm sorry about my own charge who might need to get taken, Roscoe there, contributing in the background. Here's some of the numbers that we, um, here's some of the numbers that we're especially proud of when it comes to taking charge. Two that I really, really wanna highlight for you. And maybe this is, uh, maybe this comes from my background. You guys know how motivation in middle school tends to, I'm gonna say ebb more than flow. Um, and so, so one of the things we're especially proud of is that surveys in our data of kids engagement has showed us that 
three quarters of kids feel more comfortable with their own technology skills and the whole concept of learning computer science. It's really demystifying and accessible to them in this way, which is huge because when you build that enthusiasm, you build a confidence to take on more complex topics. And I think one of the things that I've seen kill a lot of kids enthusiasm for some of the more advanced computer science topics has been an early feeling of misunderstanding or it's outside of my grasp or I don't know how this works or if it breaks someone else has to fix it. So that's one thing we're particularly proud of with the game. Now, 88% of, player, of players of Take in Charge, we found were more likely to continue to learn about computer science after Take in Charge. So we're also trying to light that fuse to get these kids to really get passionate about learning about computer science. Again, creating some fertile soil there in their minds for more seeds of computer science to be planted. What we actually cover through Take in Charge are five sort of units, if you will. If you were teaching this in, say, a 45 minute period, you might regard these each as a separate sort of mini unit within your class, having kids play and doing some instruction alongside. Now, it can also stand alone. Quite frankly, I have played the game all the way through, and like I said, learned quite a bit along the way in a very self directed way without anybody else over my shoulder. We first cover building a computer and boy, am I embarrassed to admit how little of that I knew um, as someone who taught technology before I played the game. Then we talk about configuring a secure network, really fascinating and really can open up some ripe discussion in your class um, on sort of network security. Then we get into the recognizing, reporting and counteracting cyberbullying. This is probably the most popular unit, right? The one that people are hungry to get to. And I'll speak to that a little bit later. Then we've got protecting your online identity. So of course this goes to sort of your data security. I don't know about you guys, but it feels like every week I get a letter from Target or my dentist's office that something's been compromised. And it's really helpful to have a solid grasp, even as a kid of what that means and what the impacts are. And then, how to Google something or how to search something is such an unbelievable critical research and media literacy skill today. And understanding Boolean search logic gets you so much further down the road of understanding that. So that final piece really, I think, sets kids up to then go find the things that they're inspired to know more about. Here's where we break down. I kind of mentioned that you can break it down into six units, or these are the topics which it, within each of the modules of the game. Let me move your beautiful faces out of the way here for a second. So the first module is Siri and the cu Curious Code. And again, this is where we get into hardware, digital media types, and your external accessories, like my Bluetooth mouse here, right? Then we've got Sunny in the Nautical Network. This is where Sunny takes center stage. And we again talk about the internet functionality, the email, the Boolean search logic, and then again, that internet browser usage and terminology. What so many of us don't even think about the fact that your browser is your portal to the internet. And I think that that's sort of critical to build that foundational understanding in for kids. Adele in the Web of Mystery takes us through the networking pieces, everything from file and printing sharing, how you can airdrop something to someone's phone, computer, what have you, and then sort of your home network setup even included in there. Sunny in the Security Secret, like we said, this is where we get into that internet safety and protection and the cyberbullying prevention piece that I'll speak more to. Now, we've got lots of different games. I will play this as the second and last short video I'm gonna to play today, but this should give you an idea of what the gameplay looks like, right? Just to give you a sense of that super fast here. And then I'm gonna dive into a bit of the, um, sort of the technical stuff for you, like what's the gameplay? What kind of lesson plans can we build around this? How are kids incentivized? So again, like I said, let me know if you can't hear anything. I'm Mora. I'm the president and CEO of Galvanized Labs. And I'm Dyson, the COO of Galvanized Labs and lead game designer of our new production, Take in Charge. Take in Charge is a browser-based technology education video game. It is very unique in this genre as it brings fully educationally validated curriculum and teaching methods via game-based learning. 
while at the same time offering players a high quality and very engaging gaming experience. The Take a Charge curriculum focuses on building the foundation for quality, long-term technology education, the building blocks. Before students attempt advanced technology topics like coding and game design, they must first learn and master the basics, the fundamentals. In school, they don't start a student's math education with long division. They start with numbers, then counting, then addition, subtraction, and so on. Progressive learning. Why should it be any different with technology? And that's exactly how Take in Charge teaches. Take in Charge teaches those technology topics that come before coding. We then take those beginner topics and build on them. For example, when a student has a baseline understanding of how the internet works, it's easier for them to more thoroughly grasp topics like Boolean search logic, networking, internet safety and protection, and cyberbullying. In Taking Charge, we're building knowledge, not just distributing curriculum. This style of progressive learning puts a strong emphasis on problem solving and critical thinking. Now, we get asked all the time, why these topics? And the answer is pretty simple. It's about getting students interested in technology as a subject, and more importantly, keeping them interested. Most of the members of the Galvanized Labs team spent the better part of the last decade teaching technology to youth students around the country. Sorry, I'm going to go back there. I'm going to skip a little section to move us along a little bit more swiftly. Stay with me. Neil, there was a question in the chat. I'm not sure if you saw, maybe you can address about the uh, platform of the game, JavaScript or Python. Um, the, 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 actually the game, the game is built, uh, using, I mean, commercial, commercial game quality, um, uh, technology. And I'm going to, I'm going to keep in mind as the chairman of the chairman of the company, the technology, the build is something else. And the name escapes me, but basically that, that, that technology that is used for the, any of the class A building blocks, this was built here. I mean, this is a big build. It's a big build. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it shows in sort of, you'll see, we'll get into even more of the graphics here. In this next section of the video, the last three minutes I'm going to play here, um, please pay attention to the types of gameplay that you see happening. Charge is a browser-based video game. The only thing that a player needs in order to play the game is an internet connection, a web browser, and a fourth grade reading level. If you have those three things, you're ready to get started. You've seen the number of technology subjects that will be taught within Take in Charge, 17 different technology subjects to be exact. So as you can imagine, the game is quite large. Playing Take in Charge from beginning to end can take the average player anywhere from 14 to 18 hours and consists of 49 unique levels. The game follows the story of our three main characters, the siblings Siri, Adele, and Sunny. In the opening cinematic of our game, the player learns that a mysterious bad guy has stolen the sibling's dog, who of course is named Charge. The progression of our game follows the story of our characters as they embark upon an adventure to get their dog back. During the game, the player will have a chance to play as each of the three different main characters. Take in Charge offers players three different level types that they will interact with. We'll break them down for you. First is known as the player initiated conversation or pick. Player-initiated conversation levels are important for several reasons. First, they will assist the player in finding out what's happening in the storyline and what they need to do next with their character to continue their journey to rescue charge. This is also where a lot of learning takes place. During these conversations between characters, players will be learning about the technology topic that they will be encountering in the next several levels. These conversations give players the baseline knowledge they will need for the technology topic at hand. The next type of level is known as the side-scrolling level. Now, there's a lot going on in these side-scrolling levels. So first, we'll discuss how they contribute to the learning component of the game, and then we'll revisit their many other features. Most of Taken Charge's side-scrolling levels are designed to reinforce and expand on the knowledge that the player obtained in the previous player-initiated conversation. But as you can see, there's a lot more going on in these side-scrolling levels than just learning. This is where a lot of the action of the game takes place as well. In these levels, the player will get to exercise their gamer muscles and show off their moves with spectacular jumps over death pits, using jump pads to reach higher platforms, and avoid run-ins with minions that will send your character back to the previous save point. The third and final type of level offered within Take in Charge is arguably the most important, the mini-game assessment. Validating learning is one of the most significant features within the game. Not only are we teaching technology subjects and skill sets, the game is also able to validate and provide proof of successful learning. 
This is crucial to the ultimate success of the student, as well as to the progressive learning model that is utilized by Take in Charge. By stopping throughout the game to validate learning, we confirm that each student only progresses through the game when they can proficiently demonstrate understanding of each topic before moving on to a more advanced topic. Assessments can put a real damper on fun, so Take in Charge presents assessments via minigame. There are over 20 different minigame assessments within Take in Charge. Each minigame tests the knowledge that the player has learned over the previous two to five levels. There are numerous other assessments and levels like the previous few you just saw that make up the entire Take in Charge game. Through character conversations, entertaining and engaging side-scrolling gameplay, and a variety of minigames, it is no wonder that ISTE granted Take in Charge with the first seal of alignment for teaching and evaluating tech ed standards within a video game. Thanks for watching our gameplay walkthrough of Take in Charge. If you would like to continue the conversation and learn more about Take in Charge, visit us at the Take in Charge website, takeinchargegame.com, or reach out to the Galvanized Labs team at info at galvanizedlabs.com, or on Facebook and Twitter. All right. So again, there's three types of gameplay that you saw there. And yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Kate, we, the videos don't have as much raw, raw CSTA as they should, but we'll raw, raw CSTA um, for you guys all here. You guys can all give me, a, give me a, an applause on that one. But as for the gameplay, again, there are these three different kinds. Now, I will say that if you're gonna need to scaffold the game in any respect, the only place where you need to scaffold is for maybe your struggling readers. Again, it is very much a fourth grade level. And I found that even my sixth graders who were maybe you know reading sort of in a Fontas and Pinnell sort of mid alphabet, were absolutely able to decipher it. And there was so much in terms of visual reinforcement and actual like active demo that we didn't have a lot of problem with comprehension. But what I super valued was these mini game assessments, which were really a Trojan horse for getting authentic assessment in there, for getting kids to demonstrate that they had understood the component parts of building a computer and how they had to fit together and talk to each other. And you really couldn't advance in the game. The incentive was built in. I will shoot you completely straight. We've played a lot of educational games in our day, probably all of us. I knew I've played them in a lot of my classes. And one of the points that I found was always shaky or often the point where the game just failed and wasn't worth implementing in the class anymore was often in this assessment piece. And I mean that in the sense that the assessment either brought the fun to a screeching halt or it didn't give me the information I needed to know about what topics might need reinforcement or what topics my students might need so an, an active in-person demo for, or a little bit more explanation to go back and play the game. I would also say that kids were by and large able to do this very independently and move through because when they struggled in the mini game assessments, there's reteaching built into the design of the game. Also critical, right? One of the things we struggle with, we collect the data, but what do we do when we find out that a kid didn't get this concept? So that's built in, in a great respect, in take in charge. Then I will also just say, there is nothing more exciting than seeing kids competing against each other in, in the interest of getting, you know, they want to get the knowledge, but they also want to win the game. And that traditional side-scrolling Mario style play really does get their adrenaline pumping and get them really into this game. I appreciate that the combination of these three both builds the excitement, provides the learning, and then assesses the learning. And frankly, as much as I, I watched it happen the first time I had the 14 year old in my house a few years ago, had him play take in charge and watched him, like it says in the first column here, hit the tab key to zip right through the explanation to get to the side scrolling level. And he was immediately brought to a grinding halt and had to go back and realize that he had to actually read and follow the story. And then he got invested in the narrative of saving charge, the dog, as well as in the actual information that was being transmitted. Now, the other way that we, in, we can incentivize is with the badges that the kids earn along the way. This is the, I mean, we call it badges, but as teachers, you all know, this is the principle of the sticker. It is unbelievable what human beings will do in pursuit of that gold star. To some, in some respect, we're all still chasing after it. So here's the gold stars that kids learn, can earn rather through these badges 
they get through the mini game incentives. And this really gets kids competing to level up. You're looking for a good billboard, a good bulletin board in your classroom. I had one tracking where kids were moving their little faces as they moved along this continuum, whether they were an internet investigators, they could even you know, put these badges literally on the top of their computers in my lab. So other ways to incentivize kids, and really this is they've mastered the standards from this section, they're ready to move on to the next section. Here's the things that we can demonstrate they have mastery of before they earn this badge. If you guys have any questions about these, feel free to pop them in the chat. I'm happy to stop along the way. But I do want to now, at this point, just kind of stop and ask you to, to contribute to the chat. I'll give about two minutes here. Share one of these three things that you have so far about taking charge. Where I'm going next is really talk about the teacher side of things. But in terms of the student experience and the student side of things, this I've done the bulk of that so far. So share, please, in the chat, if you would, with us, either one thing from what we said so far that's squared with your thinking or made sense to you about taking charge and what it can do in classrooms. Something, it doesn't have to be three things. You can go with one thing you learned today that you can carry forth into your classroom work or any questions or thoughts that are still circling in your head. So I just want to get, get some voices into the chat. Javier, yes, a dashboard is available for teachers, and I will speak about that here in our next section. Grade bands, we recommend from three to eight. Three to eight is recommended. That being said, people are very, uh, we've got kids into it on other sides. I mentioned earlier, I have a three and six-year-old, and they were raptly attentive to the gameplay itself over the 12-year-old at the time shoulder. How long does it take to earn each badge? So this varies. I would say I played the entire game in under four hours and I didn't get everything right on the first try. Neil, would you, what would, do you have a time estimate that you would say? I generally did it over, I, you know, I broke it down again into probably a half hour of gameplay over several weeks in my classroom. But do you guys have a benchmark? You know, the, we, we've, we've seen it, we've seen it go as quickly, and I think you're quick at four hours. We've seen it go longer. It could be as long as 16 hours of gameplay. What we, but what, what, one thing that I wanted to make sure everybody saw, what well, I saw when I would go into the classrooms that was beneficial for me, not only are they lose learning these hard skills and becoming comfortable with it, it was the soft, soft skills that was impressive. The critical thinking, uh, when somebody got stuck, they went to another student and helped them along. So if you have one student being a leader, in one section, someone else being, you know, then working together as a team for the other. And you are right, the motivation of the stickers and the badges, I went back and interviewed a number of principals and both of them, or, you know, several, one of them, they stopped me right away and said, stopped with the stories. They said they'd never had students come up to them so excited about here's what I earned. And I, it was difficult, but they were thrilled and then moving forward. So you were right on. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, so it does depend. It depends on how big your segments are of time, like how concentrated kids are, how long kids are playing on any given time. I also have never had so many kids groan at the end of class as the days when they were playing this. And it was also one of my most successful homework assignments. I didn't live in a district with very consistent technology at home. So, but we did offer it as an optional out of school assignment. And we had kids playing it in the after school program at our school. They were into it. Some of our data just showed us that as much as 25% of the badges were earned actually on the weekends when the, uh, the students were playing it on their own time. And that was, that was pleasantly, that was a pleasant surprise. Sorry, I have a young visitor. Uh, ask Neil. Not right now, mommy's in a meeting. All right, so I have here, we've got sort of a tour of the LMS. Now this really takes you in detail, this video, and it's 15 minutes long. So I'm just going to here provide you a teaser that if this is what you're interested in, I'll talk about what the LMS shares in it. Um, it's, it's very straightforward. I don't want to say basic and undercut it in any way, but it gives you the information you want to know about your kids to see whether they're meeting standards, how they're progressing, whether they're sort of meeting your assignment timeline, that kind of thing is all there. This video gives you a great tour. You'll have this presentation right afterwards, so you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to review this if you're interested and want to take a preview of that LMS. As to what is there, right? So let me just give you the overview. 
you can bulk upload your student accounts via CSV. And we originally prepared this for CPS teachers. I know not all of you are there. So your students will could have been could be uploaded by Galvanized Labs. And if they have transfers, you can always add a single student or you can reach out to take in charge support. There are this data is available to all teachers using the LMS. There's digital 28 of those digital badges earned by week or month. You can save. So one of the things I really appreciate is that the kids progress can be automatically saved. Huge makes a huge difference their ability to stay engaged. You also can find out um, how many times students have logged in right. So this is where if you're looking for accountability tracking it's there. Progression is how far students have moved in the game. And then we've got our usage. So if you're one who likes to have certain minutes or if you've got that kind of accountability need, it's there for you. Now, we'll go ahead and move on to the next piece. Not right now. You, mommy can't do it right now. So please take care of it yourself or ask Camille. Thank you. Sorry, guys. We have to finish telling us. The All right, so how are we facilitating meaningful instruction while students are using take in charge, right? How are we making sure that we're also teaching? Um, students are, um, students while they're doing this, right, can do it independently and a lot of them do. One moment. We're gonna get some lemonade on our own. This should be an adventure, guys. So we have, if you're building Take in Charge into your classroom, we do provide, we do have a number of lesson plans. So what kind of discussions can we have before the module? What kind of objectives are we covering? What are your sort of game goals and how would you break the game down to teach it in school? Many of you I'm sure are in hybrid or remote situations. These are also very adaptable depending on whether you're simulcasting or giving kids remote independent work. Those are all there. So we've got it broken down into basically 15 modules. And I want to say lesson plans, it doesn't necessarily mean one 45 minute period. It can mean that it's something that you do over a couple of days. All right, I've sent in the uh, I've sent in the cavalry there. Now, the other thing that we super recommend, and this is something that I found sort of in the second and third year that I had taken charge, um, had was using it with kids, is that I really got to buff up devices and demonstrations. We provide some recommendations for this in our lesson plan demos, but bringing some physical computing components into the classroom. Okay, it's I, I want to put the big disclaimer that I understand we're not sharing any supplies right now in schools, but as we look into hopefully the normal future and we're able to have kids sort of act out the networking activities or bring those physical components so they can see a physical motherboard. Um, these can be things that are really useful, whether they are meant as sort of a differentiated approach for students who benefit from something that's more hands on or for concepts that your kids find especially All right. Now, building taking charge into your class discussions. If you're using, if you're teaching remotely and using a Google Classroom or a different LMS to have kids sort of submit impressions and work, you can also do these discussions digitally in a lot of different ways. But in a regular classroom setting, we there are a number of points, especially when we get into the security areas where we can recommend some debate. Obviously, your turn and talks and your think pair shares and your quick reviews are always there for you while you're um, working with Take in Charge. We've also got some, um, in some of the lesson plans, we recommend some fishbowl discussions about some of the cybersecurity pieces. And then, of course, if you're really thinking about layering in your literacy standards, like supporting evidence, that's something that kids are sort of doing inherently as they begin to build in some of the mini games as they're demonstrating their understanding of some of the more concept, co complex concepts. So a couple of discussion questions. Um, the, the first one I think is one that a lot of people, if you get into any kind of cyberbullying in your curriculum, you've probably asked some variation of this. And that's, you know, is this cyberbullying? 
so-and-so said X to me, is it cyberbullying and why or why not? Discuss in that gray area. Something that's covered in the game and that you can extend beyond the game with a further classroom discussion. And then how should you secure your identity information in line? How do you keep from getting that letter from the dentist's office as much as, as, much as possible within reason, right? And those are other things that have built rich discussions that we've seen in classrooms. Social emotional learning. All right, another super hot topic right now. But what I saw in my classroom, and I can vouch for having happened, and some of those numbers we showed in one of those first slides really vouches for happening, is that take in charge does build certain SEL skills when it comes to things like self-management and decision-making. There are a lot of decision points in this game. And frankly, it's built around this fairly emotional story of the dog is missing, we're trying to find the dog. I mean, it's a quest in its essence, and it asks you to really um, to really engage with the characters and their needs as well. So we wouldn't, it's certainly, this is sort of a, a natural byproduct of the way that the game is designed as a first person player, but we have found that it's also really gotten kids to show a lot of tenacity, show a lot of overcoming frustration, again, to sort of self-manage as they work through this game. I had to exercise some of my social emotional skills myself the first time I played through the game and it took me a few tries to put certain components into the right place. But I, but again, we've got so much motivation built into the game with the engaging gameplay that it helps kids get over that hump of this is frustrating, I don't want to anymore. Right, I've seen a lot of controllers thrown at video game consoles over the years, and I never saw a kid get quite to the point where they were checking their mouse at the screen. There was teeth sucking. I will say there was teeth sucking and there was frustration and there were hands in the air, but it was always in the service of, of something they wanted to know and really wanted to get into. Now, um, also the homeschool connection. I mean, the, the, the walls are down folks. I don't know what your teaching model is where you are, but the line between homeschool, home and school is so blurry as to be almost unintelligible in some ways right now. Students can access their taking charge accounts from home. Again, it's browser-based to continue their learning or refresh the skills that they obtained. And we also do have a grown-up guide for parents. Um, it has sort of, de facto lesson plans for parents to follow that allow them to stay informed and engaged about what their kids are learning. Um, does it work with Spheros and what, what kind of information is needed for login? So we follow obviously student data privacy laws. Students will have a login and password. You as the teacher have control over that and how to reset that, right? So that's what you'll need for your students. Um, and then as for Spheros, I, I don't know the answer to that question. Neil, do you know either? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's Amora, and I'll, I'll take that as yeah. a note and get it back to Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say you got the two of the lesser nerds, but Mora is one of the, you know, was one of the folks who founded the Geek Squad. So I think she'll stand by that, that, that dis distinction. So I have, um, I don't have a survey link for you guys today since this was less of, an, less of the interactive workshop that we generally do. Kate, awesome, thank you for following up on that question. But I've kind of finished the stand and deliver portion of this and would love to, I'm happy to go back and answer questions, happy to back up to any parts of this presentation. Um, I don't believe, I mean, my students never used email for sign in. We're not, they're not, the kids aren't using sign in. They had their independent logins that you could use. So for that, any other questions that we can we can uh, <clears throat> answer for you guys? Examples from my classroom or others? Um, I'm happy to uh, happy to fill you in on any of that from my experience. And I'll just make a plug here really quick that you can get an individual license for free, and then you can get a discount at the school or district level. So that's something that you can reach out to Galvanize Labs or Kate certainly can support you at CSTA with getting that discount. Like we said, the individual license is free. Um, and I'll actually turn it over to Kate now. Yeah, thanks so much, Jessica. I really appreciated you kind of walking through things because even though I know about this benefit, I have not played the game yet. <laughs> um, so I'm, yeah, I'm excited to try it out because I, don't have a computer science background and I've just started to kind of learn a lot of the foundations since at CSTA. Um, yeah, so there is a free license available for anyone that's a CSTA Plus member. If you're not and you're on this call, 
I can help you get a discount <laughs> to become a plus member. Um, but that's a way, as Jessica was saying, to play the game for yourself and kind of assess it for what you're looking for in your classroom or district, um, which I will follow up with this recording in the slide deck and information about how to get to that benefit. It's on your benefit page. Redemption information is prompted when you log in. Um, I think the other thing is there is a discount of, you know, if you are interested in putting it for your full classroom as well as for the district. So definitely like kind of lean into that. Um, and then secondly, I think I saw a question around pricing. Um, I'm not sure how it's exactly broken down, but actually in the redemption benefits, you can fill out a form to say, hey, can I get a quote with um, the discount. So I'm more than happy to kind of share that information in the follow-up email so you can know exactly and kind of what to anticipate, expectations, and kind of where to go from there. Um, yeah, but I think I'll just pause there and see if there's any other questions. Other than that, we could end maybe a little bit early. Awesome. Thanks, Tammy. Yeah, I'm excited. I also like, I mean, someone took my pet I would be like devastated so this feels like it kind of wrenches at your your heartstrings a little I bit I will say like with your younger <laughs> students uh, the youngest I've implemented this was fifth grade but um but I will say that in fifth grade we had to have we had to clear a fair amount of our schedule for their concerns about the dog and yeah. what's going to happen to the dog so do be aware that that is a question nothing bad happens to the dog spoiler alert <laughs> out there I feel like that's important to clarify, yeah. especially yeah. today and what's going on in the world yeah. is like, is the dog going to be okay? Yes. Um, awesome. Well, thank you so much. I think we're okay to wrap up. I appreciate everyone being on the call and everyone watching the recording later. Um, I'll send you some information on, on, you know, the benefit, this recording, the slide deck. Um, feel free to check out the individual license. I think it's a great way to see if it's a good fit for you or to kind of do something this weekend. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, thanks so much. Uh, Jessica, do you want to say anything else? No, just um, happy playing. I think you'll really enjoy it. I would say start your journey playing it yourself when you have a little time to get into the game, maybe like get to your first mini assessment, say half an hour should be enough time to get a good feel for it uh, as a teacher. And so, you know, when you have a half an hour, it is an engaging half an hour. Some of the best classroom research I got to do. Oh my gosh, love it. Awesome. And then if you have questions later that come up around this, um, I hope it's okay if I share Jessica, your email or someone else at taking yeah. charge and that you can definitely follow up. They want to help support you and see if it's a good match or even if uh, maybe people have suggestions. We, we get that as well sometimes <laughs> with our products, but yeah, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and end a little bit early. Everyone, please take care of yourselves and we appreciate you, you sharing your evening uh, with us today. All right, thanks everyone, be well. I'll share Jessica's information as well, thanks. <laughs>